the only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. We are warned in the Holy Bible time and time again against false teaching and doctrines of devil. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1 says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. There are many of these heresies being preached in our day, and we need to watch out against them. Let's consider four of these teachings so that we can do well to avoid them. Teaching number one, Jesus is the Son of God, but He is not God. This is one of the ideas presented by the New Age movement. The New Agers see Jesus as the greatest creature of God. They regard him only as a great teacher and nothing more. Similarly, it is a dangerous doctrine that Jesus is the Son of God, but not God himself. This is not what the Bible tells us. Jesus is God, and scripture highlights that clearly. In John chapter 10, verse 30, Jesus said that he and his Father are one. John chapter 1, verse 1 also tells us that from the beginning, the Word was. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. From Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, we understand that Jesus is the Son of God and the Word of God. This means that Jesus is God because the Word was God. The reason why this doctrine leads people to hell is because the doctrine you believe in about Jesus Christ is literally a heaven or hell issue. You can be wrong about Christian eschatology. You can be wrong about baptism. You can be wrong about tithe. You can be wrong about a lot of doctrines. But the one doctrine you cannot be wrong about is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Because if you are wrong about the doctrine of Jesus Christ, you are following another Jesus Christ. The Bible even speaks of another Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you received a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. Jesus is not a good man or just a good teacher. Jesus is not just a prophet. Jesus is quite literally God. When you put the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ on, you are putting on the righteousness of God on. You have to do business with Jesus. You must deal with him. He is God. When he was walking on this earth, he forgave sins as God. I cannot forgive you of your sins because I am not God. I don't have the authority to. Only God does, and Jesus is God. We need Jesus to enter into heaven. His righteousness alone is the entrance into heaven. Your own righteousness will send you to hell. This is why Jesus had to come. He put himself in the form of a man, yet still being God. He was absolutely God as much as his father is God. And he was absolutely human as much as his mother is human. This is what puzzles people. That is what we mean when we talk about the incarnation. That's what we mean when we talk about the fleshing of deity. That's what we mean when we talk about the tabernacling of the word. Teaching number two, we are little or mini gods. The belief that we are little gods was popularized by false teachers and the New Agers. The idea is that because we are children of God, we are also mini gods and can obtain anything we please because we share in the divine nature of God. This idea is built around materialism. It makes believers to focus on getting money, fame, and material wealth at all costs. They put forward the idea that Jesus died so we can have all we want here on earth. That's not true. Jesus did not die so you can buy a new car or a flashy wristwatch. Jesus died to save you from the flames of hell. And on that final day, you will see billions of people who have rejected Christ being cast into the lake of fire. You will truly appreciate what Jesus did for you and I on the cross. A car will be meaningless in comparison to avoiding the fires of hell. The material stuff that we often pray for will be completely and utterly meaningless when you see billions of people being cast into the lake of fire on the last day. The mini God theology attempts to equate us with God. This doctrine may sound good to itching ears. However, the Bible teaches us that God is holy, righteous, omnipresent, and omniscient. Yet man is sinful 
and has only been made blameless before God through the death of Christ, not our own innate divinity. If man is equal to God, he ought to be omnipotent and omniscient, as he is. Any doctrine that teaches that we are gods in an attempt to make us amass wealth, fame, and have things is unscriptural. Teaching number three, all roads lead to heaven. One of the toxic teachings circulating in our day is that it is narrow-minded to think that Jesus is the only way to the Father. In John chapter 14, verse six, Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one can approach the Father except through him. But false teachers have explained that this statement only applies in the context of what Jesus was saying to the disciples at the time. They also argue that Jesus' statement was only directed to his disciples and should not be generalized. However, this does not in any way align with the scripture. There are not many roads to heaven. There is just one way, and that is Jesus Christ. That right there is the Christian faith. The Christian faith is dogmatic. That is biblical faith. It is uncompromising. That is true biblical faith. It does not negotiate. It does not leave room for interpretation. In other words, no Jesus, no heaven. In John chapter 3, Jesus told Nicodemus that except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, the idea that all roads lead to heaven is erroneous, and any church or pastor who is preaching this doctrine is a wolf in sheep's clothing. This doctrine has its roots in universalism. Universalism is the belief that ultimately everybody will be saved, and that is a lie according to the Bible. Universalism suggests that those who reject God's provision of salvation through through his son will be saved. In other words, a person does not need the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That is what universalism is inferring. Teaching number four, prosperity gospels. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 8 through 9 says, And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Most present day messages are out of alignment with scripture. There are several false teachers out there who teach people how to get rich quick. They are more concerned with people filling their churches rather than people filling heaven. The prosperity gospel treats God as a genie in a bottle. But that's not God. You can't rub him and tell him, Lord, I want you to do this. You can't force the Lord Jesus Christ to do anything. And your relationship with the Lord should not be based on the things that God does for you. But that is the prosperity gospel. It is a gospel centered around what the Lord can do for you. Prosperity gospels make people become more materialistic. They ask you to believe in Jesus and you will get rich or buy a new car. But this is not the gospel. The prosperity gospel makes people focus on mundane things at the expense of eternity. The prosperity gospel encourages you to lay up treasures here on earth where moth and rust destroys and where thieves break in and steal. Whereas the true gospel encourages you to do the exact opposite. Matthew chapter six, verses 19 through 21. Do not lay up yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Our heart should be with the Lord Jesus Christ. God is concerned about your heart. Remember, the Lord said to the prophet Samuel that he looks at the heart. And if you remember, Jesus said one of the two greatest commandments is, love the Lord your God with all your heart. This is it. God is interested in your heart and a person who prescribes to the prosperity gospel, their heart is not in love with God. Their heart is in love with this world and the things of this world. If God did nothing more for you in your life than giving you the free gift of salvation, that is more than a person could ever ask for because that gift of salvation is an eternal gift. It is a gift that is priceless. Time shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.